Ever wondered how your body manages to respond to the myriad of stimuli around you? It's all thanks to the intricate network of the nervous system. This complex system acts as the body's electrical wiring, transmitting signals between different parts. It's the reason we can think, feel, move, and even dream. It's an incredible piece of biological engineering that's as fascinating as it is vital to our survival. Ready to delve into the fascinating world of the nervous system? Buckle up because it's going to be a thrilling ride. To understand the nervous system we first need to understand its building blocks, neurons, and glial cells. Neurons, often referred to as nerve cells, are the essential players in the nervous system. They transmit information by electrical and chemical signals, creating the intricate communication network that controls our body. Each neuron is composed of a cell body, dendrites, and an axon. The cell body houses the nucleus and other vital organelles, while dendrites receive signals and the axon sends them. On the other hand, glial cells are like the supporting cast. They don't transmit signals but they play crucial roles in maintaining the health and efficiency of neurons, providing them with nutrients, removing waste, and even insulating them with a substance called myelin to speed up signal transmission. Together, these cells form the foundation of our nervous system. From here we move on to how these cells interact and function in larger structures. Now that we know what neurons are, let's explore how they function. Neurons, the fundamental units of the brain and nervous system, are responsible for receiving sensory input from the external world, sending motor commands to our muscles, and transforming and relaying the electrical signals at every step in between. But how exactly do they accomplish this? The answer lies in a process involving action potentials and synapses. Each neuron has a cell body, or soma, that houses the nucleus and two types of extensions, dendrites and an axon. Dendrites are like antennas receiving messages from other neurons and sending them to the cell body. The axon, on the other hand, is like a broadcasting station, sending messages out to other neurons. These messages are transmitted in the form of electrical signals called action potentials. An action potential is a sudden and significant increase in the electrical activity of a neuron. It begins when a neuron receives a signal from another neuron. If this signal is strong enough, it triggers an action potential. This electrical impulse travels down the axon away from the cell body and towards the axon terminals. At the end of the axon the electrical signal needs to jump over to the next neuron. This is where synapses come into play. A synapse is a tiny gap where the axon of one neuron can communicate with the dendrite of another. The electrical signal can't cross this gap so it's converted into a chemical message. The axon releases chemicals called neurotransmitters into the synapse, which float across the gap and bind to receptors on the receiving neuron's dendrite. This binding triggers a new action potential in the receiving neuron, and so the message continues on its way. It's this transmission of signals that forms the basis of all nervous system functions. Whether you're feeling the warmth of the sun on your skin, deciding to turn the page of a book, or remembering a fond memory, it all comes down to the intricate dance of action potentials and synapses in your neurons. With the basic functioning understood, we can now move on to the major divisions of the nervous system. The nervous system, akin to a vast and intricate network, is primarily divided into two major parts, the central nervous system, or CNS, and the peripheral nervous system, or PNS. The CNS is the command center of your body, comprising the brain and the spinal cord. It is here that all the information from the body is received, processed, and then the appropriate response is decided upon. The brain, the crown jewel of the CNS, is not just a mass of gray matter. It's the seat of intelligence, interpreter of the senses, initiator of body movement, and controller of behavior. On the other hand, the spinal cord is the main pathway for information connecting the brain and peripheral nervous system. Now let's move on to the peripheral nervous system, which acts as a messenger service between the CNS and the rest of the body. It's like the wires that connect your computer to the printer, allowing for communication between the two. The PNS is further broken down into the somatic and autonomic nervous systems, but we'll delve into those in the next scene. The peripheral nerves include 12 pairs of cranial nerves that emerge directly from the brain, and 31 pairs of spinal nerves that branch off from the spinal cord. Each of these nerves has a specific function, like carrying sensory information to the CNS, or transmitting motor commands from the CNS to the muscles. The nervous system is an incredible network of communication, ensuring that your body works as a cohesive unit. From the tips of your fingers to the ends of your toes, every part of your body is connected through this complex web of nerves. 
In essence, the CNS is the decision maker, and the PNS is the doer. The CNS makes the decisions, and the PNS carries out the orders. It truly is a marvel of biological engineering. These divisions provide a framework for understanding the complex interactions within the nervous system. Let's delve deeper into the peripheral nervous system and its subdivisions. The peripheral nervous system or PNS is a vast network of nerves that extends from the brain and spinal cord, reaching out to every corner of our bodies. It's like a communication superhighway. And it's divided into three main subdivisions, the somatic, autonomic and enteric nervous systems. The somatic nervous system is your voluntary control center. It governs muscle movement and the reception of external stimuli. If you've ever reached out to touch a raindrop, or dance to your favorite song, that's your somatic nervous system at work. It's all about action and sensation in response to the world around us. Next up, we have the autonomic nervous system, or ANS. This is your body's autopilot, controlling involuntary processes like heart rate, digestion, and breathing. The ANS is further split into the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous systems. The sympathetic is your body's fight-or-flight response, kicking in when you're under stress or facing danger. The parasympathetic, on the other hand, is all about rest and digest. It kicks in when you're relaxed and focuses on conserving energy and maintaining bodily functions. Last but not least, we have the enteric nervous system, the least known of the three. This independent network is often referred to as your second brain, with roughly 100 million neurons lining your gastrointestinal tract. It controls the function of your digestive system, from swallowing to the release of enzymes and the control of blood flow to aid in digestion. These three subdivisions of the peripheral nervous system work in harmony to keep your body functioning optimally. They are the unsung heroes tirelessly carrying out their duties behind the scenes, connecting your brain and spinal cord to the rest of your body. These subdivisions enable the peripheral nervous system to carry out its diverse functions. Now that we have a solid understanding of the nervous system, let's explore some clinical notes related to it. Parkinson's disease is one condition that highlights how crucial the nervous system is to our day-to-day -day functioning. Named after Dr. James Parkinson who first described it in the early 19th century, this condition occurs when neurons in a specific part of the brain begin to break down or die. The loss of these neurons leads to decreased dopamine levels, causing symptoms like shaking, rigidity and difficulty with walking, balance and coordination. Current treatments focus on managing these symptoms, but research is ongoing to find a cure. Spina bifida from the Latin for split spine is another condition related to the nervous system. It's a birth defect where the spine and spinal cord don't form properly. This can lead to physical and intellectual disabilities that range from mild to severe. The exact cause is unknown but it seems to result from a combination of genetic, nutritional and environmental factors. Vagotomy, a surgical procedure that involves removing part of the vagus nerve, is another interesting clinical note. This nerve plays a crucial role in the autonomic nervous system, controlling digestion, heart rate, and other bodily functions. The procedure is often used to treat stomach ulcers by reducing the production of stomach acid. Cranial nerve palsies can result from damage to one or more of the 12 cranial nerves, which control the muscles and carry sensory signals from the head and neck to the brain. Symptoms depend on which nerves are affected but may include vision problems, loss of sensation and muscle weakness. Hirschsprung's disease is a rare condition present at birth, in which the nerves in the bowel do not develop, leading to chronic constipation. Surgery to bypass or remove the diseased part of the colon is the main treatment. Taste in the anterior two-thirds of the tongue can be affected by damage to the facial nerve, the seventh cranial nerve. This can result from various conditions including infections, tumors, and trauma. Limb nerve lesions involve damage to the nerves in the limbs, leading to symptoms such as pain, numbness, and muscle weakness. These lesions can be caused by various factors including trauma, compression, and certain diseases. These clinical notes highlight the importance of the nervous system and the effects of its malfunction. We've covered a lot of ground today so let's recap the main points. We began with the basic units of the nervous system, the neurons and the glial cells and explored how these cells work together to form the complex system that governs our body. We then delved into the divisions of the nervous system, understanding the central and peripheral systems, and even the cranial and spinal nerves. Beyond that we unpacked the subdivisions of the peripheral nervous system, learning about the somatic, autonomic, sympathetic, parasympathetic and enteric systems. We also touched on various clinical notes, discussing conditions such as vagotomy, cranial nerve palsies, limb nerve lesions, 
Hirschsprung's disease, spina bifida, and Parkinson's disease. It's a vast and intricate field but every piece of knowledge brings us closer to understanding this wonderful network. Remember, the nervous system is an intricate network that keeps our bodies functioning smoothly. Every twitch, every thought, every heartbeat is a testament to its incredible design.